So I was listening to CNBC and uh, Kelly Evans, I think, is the anchor, but she was saying that uh, the birth rate is going down, so there's just less people being born, and that women are, you know, there's, there's she's saying the pregnancies are, are moving later. So women in their 30s and even 40s was the basically what she said. There's more women having children in their 30s and 40s. So, um, you know, one or two generations ago, it was pretty much having kids as soon as you were able to or out of high school, right? When you're 20, uh, my grandmother had a kid, I think, when she was 20 or maybe even 19, she got pregnant. I don't know, but she had seven kids. Uh, and that was somewhat normal back then. Like there was big families, five plus kids and a lot of families back in like the 50s and 60s. Uh, my parents had three kids. Uh, and us three kids have zero kids. So I'm 20, I'm almost 30 and my brother's 30 and my sister is 33. None of us have any kids. So I think that's kind of a, uh, a trend, you know, especially when you consider just the, like the cost of, of living has gone up to the point where people are, I think a little apprehensive about maybe having a kid. You know, if they can barely afford housing and can maybe just barely get by, they're they're. I I would say you're making a prudent decision not to have kids. You know, because you want to be, I think you want to be financially stable and you want to be able to have a little bit of a cushion in case anything happens before you have a kid. If you have a kid and you're not really prepared for it, it could uh, it could be a good thing, right? Because it makes you kind of uh, focus more and you know you have to do it. Like your back's really against the wall you have another person to provide for but it could also be incredibly destructive right you look at maybe households that got divorced and uh, now they're reliant on maybe government programs for food stamps or for just like the single i don't know i don't i have no idea how it works but i know that there's money that they get if they're trying to raise a child and you know child support and that sort of thing right so um I think it's a problem. You know, you, you, you really probably shouldn't have a kid if you're not really prepared for it. I don't think any 19 or 20 year old person is really ready to have a kid, but that's what they did back then. And it seemed to be okay. Uh, you know, now people are not doing that. And there's way more people in their thirties and even forties having kids because they're, you know, they're, they're, they're wanting to, experience more of life before they decide to settle down. So there's way more women working as opposed to like 30, 40, 50 years ago. And when they're working, they know that if they get pregnant or if they start a family, that that's going to, that's going to, that's going to impede with their ability to have a career. Right. So you kind of have to choose one or the other. I'm not saying you can't do both, but if you're starting your career and then you have a kid, you know, a lot of the, you know, almost all the employers, I think, have to give you three months or six months of like maternity leave, but it's going to change your, your perspective when you have a kid, right? Because if you want to go back to work, you know, now you have to pay to have your kid in like daycare or in childcare or whatever, and you might not want to do that. And then after a few years, you might say, you know, I just, I don't want to go back to work. I want to just be a, a parent, right? And maybe my partner or work or whatever the case is, right? So I just thought that was interesting, you know, because back then it, it, it did not happen. People were not having kids that, you know, you didn't, I don't think you heard about someone that was 35 or 40 years old. It, it just wasn't very common. And now it's, uh, now it's more of the case. I think it's somewhat of a good thing because statistically, most people that are that old are going to be in better shape financially to, to have a kid. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if that's good for society. Like if there's less kids being born in general, then there's less people to work. There's less tax that can be generated. You know, there's less things that can be made. And we have a lot of debt. Like we have a ton of debt and we have a ton of, uh, social assistance, social security right, is a program that I think when it was started, there was maybe two, for every two workers, there was one, I think it was either two or three workers. So for every two or three people that were working and paying taxes, 
there was one person getting benefits, right? So now it's like uh, 16 to one, I think. So there's, uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting the math confused there, but there's way more people now that are getting the program versus people paying. Before it was like two to one, and now it's like 16 to one. So there's, you know, there's way fewer people paying into it now because there's less people working, right? There's a lot more people that are living longer, that are claiming the benefits that they paid. And if you have less population working and less, less taxes being paid, then, you know, that's why we have so much debt because the obligation, you know, they're still going to pay that money because they made the commitment 30, 40, 50 years ago, but there, there's not enough new people to finance that system because there's less people being born. There's less people paying taxes. There's less products being produced. There's less things being sold, right? So all these people that are in their 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, they're trying to, or they're getting these benefits that, that they were sold, you know, when they were working, like, hey, you're going to pay into this system and we're going to take it out of your check. And then by the time you're 60, five, you know, you can claim this program so that if you can't work, you're going to have this money set aside for you that you can get and it can be kind of a basic income for you. Anyways, now those people are living really long. Healthcare has gotten better. People are living a little bit longer. There's less people that are paying into the system. And so now there's just a huge deficit on it because, you know, there's more money going out than money coming in. And if there's not enough young people to, it's just a Ponzi scheme is really what it is. It's no different than the, the Bernie Madoff or any of these Ponzi schemes you hear about on CNBC. It's the same exact thing. The only difference is the people that do the Ponzi schemes, they, they can't print more money. So they, they end up going to jail for it, right? Because they can't pay back the investors because they don't have the money. The U.S. government can't pay back anyone either. They just decide to print more money and they can do that. So they are they are just as guilty as any of these other guys, but they have the ability to just print more money. And so, again, in a roundabout way, in a roundabout way, I started off talking about like birth rate stuff, but in a roundabout way, that, that's kind of why you want to be in, 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 in like cryptocurrency and, and, and real estate and even things like, like gold and the silver, right? Because uh, they can't just, you know, they can get more gold and silver. They can go mine it, but... Bitcoin and some of these other things, you can't just go print more of it. And it's a hedge against the dollar, which has already lost 99% of its purchasing power since it was introduced. So it has a history of being inflated away basically to zero. So you never want to keep your money in, 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 in fiat. And if you can't afford real estate, which a lot of people can't, then you know, you should have some amount of money and if you, if you have money, if you have any amount of money that you're wanting to put not in cash, you know, real, uh, real estate, you know, is great. But again, crypt, some amount of cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, uh, just because it's, it's, it's something that if the dollar continues to inflate, you know, that should go up with the dollar, if not more. And, and it has the potential to go up a lot more. But if you just keep your money in, in, in a dollar, I mean, you, you already know what you're going to get. Right. You already know it's going to be bad. So those are my thoughts. Thumbs up. Have a good day.